This is a video about AC, alternating current. This is a very exciting experiment involving a bulb. The bulb is being driven off alternating current, so it's coming on and off repeatedly as the current changes direction. I drew that out on a piece of paper, and you can see it on our oscilloscope screen. On the oscilloscope screen, the blue line represents the power supply voltage, and the red line represents the voltage across the bulb. They're identical. You may notice that the power supply is going to a maximum only half as many times as the bulb is lit lighting up. That's because the bulb is lit here, and it's lit here, and it's lit here, but it's also lit down here, and lit down here, because a bulb doesn't mind which way the current flows. It lights up equally with the current going positive to negative, or negative to positive. Now we're going to see if we can convert our AC into DC. To convert our AC into DC, we need to use a component that only allows current to flow in one direction. This is called a diode. I've added a diode into the yellow wires, which are the wires from the power supply to the bulb. You can immediately see that things are different. The bulb's only coming on half as often. Let's have a look on the oscilloscope and see what's happening. Well, there it is. You can see the blue line, the power supply, this one here, continues to go positive and negative, but the voltage across the bulb, the red line, only goes positive. It does this. The diode conducts in this direction, and it doesn't conduct in this direction. It conducts in this direction, and it doesn't conduct in this direction. Something else you'll notice is that the, green, the blue line is now bigger than the red line, and that's because there's a difference in voltage here. This difference in voltage is 0.7 volts, the voltage required for a diode. And therefore, if I convert my AC into DC, rectification, I'm doing two things here. I'm losing half my AC power because it's not being used, and I'm losing some of my voltage because I need 0.7 volts for the diode. So to solve the problem of losing half of our power, I've now used a more complex rectifier. It involves having four diodes, and I'll try and explain how it works in a few minutes. But we can see on the oscilloscope display that I now have red peaks every time. Unfortunately, I can't actually connect the blue line up as well because the vagaries of the power supply mean that it just shorts out. But what I'm seeing is this. I get a peak there, and I get a peak there. I get a little flat spot in between go to peak like this, one like this, and off we go. So what it does mean is that I've managed to use both halves of my power. This blue line is rectified to the red line, this blue line is rectified to the red line. But you'll notice I still have a small gap, or if I could show you I would, and that would now be 1.4 volts because I have four diodes here, and at any one point two of them are being used. We'll look at the regulator again in just a moment. But for now, I want to show you how to draw the regulator. So we'll put the oscilloscope away, we'll find ourselves a pen, and you draw it like this. You have your AC signal coming in, and it goes through a diode, and that goes out to positive. All well and good so far. We have another diode which comes to positive from the other. AC power supply. They also need two more diodes to produce our negative supply. So four diodes in a square is called a bridge rectifier. And if I just disconnect my little rectifier up here, which will stop the ball from working, and I take all these crocodile clips off, I hope you can see that what I've drawn is exactly what I was using. There it is. Four little diodes, four little diodes. So you need to be able to draw that. To try and explain how the bridge rectifier works, I've built a new one out of LEDs instead of diodes, and I've replaced the bulb with an LED, as shown. So I've got two red LEDs, two green LEDs, and a yellow LED, just like in my diagram. Now it's running very slowly, and what you can see is that the LEDs light up in pairs, either both the green or both the red. 
Let's see why that is. Let's consider when the power supply is positive up here and negative down here. So what's going to happen? Well, current's going to flow along here. It's going to get to this junction and decide which diode can it go down. Can't go backwards through that one. It has to go through that one. It can't go backwards through this one. So it has to carry on down here. It has to come along here. Now, it looks like it could go through both of these, but it can't go through this one because this point here is a higher voltage. So it has to go back down through this one, back through this one, and along to there. So my current flows through the LED in that direction when this is positive and this is negative. Now let's look at the other situation. Let's make this negative and this positive. So this time current flows this way. It comes along here. It can only go through the red LED. It goes down through our orange LED. Comes back along this wire here, up to here. Has to make a decision. Can't go through the green because this point's higher. So I have to go up through the red and back along to negative. But most importantly, whether it be the red current or the green current, they're both going in the same direction through the LED. So my AC, changing from positive to negative, has become DC, going all in the same direction. So that's how my bridge rectifier works, and this also makes a nice Christmas display. So, so far we have our AC, which is our blue line. We have our full-wave bridge rectifier made out of four diodes, and my load here is represented by my light bulb. And what we end up with is our red line, rectified AC. It's DC because it's all positive but it's still not very smooth. And if we look at that on the oscilloscope, we'll see that it's still doing as the red line is drawn on my piece of paper here. Now, how can we make that better? What I'd really like to do is just to have it on permanently. Well, I can do this. I can turn the frequency up, and that appears to be a bit smoother. I can turn the frequency up even higher, and now my bulb appears to be permanently on. I appear to have managed to make constant level, but if I reset the oscilloscope, you'll see that we still have exactly the same red line. It's just it's going a lot faster, so you can't see it flashing. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to fill in these holes. I'd like to fill in these gaps here. So I need something to store some electricity. And of course, for that, I can use a capacitor. So if I put a capacitor on here, let's see what we notice. Well, with the bulb, you notice very little indeed. But with the line on the oscilloscope, what you notice is now it doesn't go back down to zero. I don't have a green line on my oscilloscope, but I'm going to use a green pen. What happens is the capacitor discharges slowly. It's then charged back up again, discharges slowly, charged back up again, discharges slowly. And we get the nice line that as seen on the oscilloscope. So if I go back to my bridge rectifier now, what I've done is added a capacitor in parallel with my load and it wants to be a big value so many thousands of microfarads it wants to be a suitably high voltage so at least as much as the voltage that you're using across your load and that's called smoothing we use a capacitor to smooth our supply doesn't make it perfectly flat but it's not bad